ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my adorable co-host Teddy, and today we're putting the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X up against the Intel i5-8600K and see who comes out on top. So let's jump right into it with the CPU specifications themselves. So the Intel i5-8600K is a 6-core, six 6-thread, six 14 nanometer Coffee Lake CPU coming in with a 3.6 GHz base clock and a 4.3 GHz boost clock. It is also fully unlocked. The Ryzen 5 2600X is a 6-core, 12 12-thread, 12 nanometer Ryzen CPU with a 3.6 GHz base clock and a 4.2 GHz boost clock, and it is also fully unlocked. So let's take a look at the test rigs. The 2600X was tested with the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7, which is a fantastic motherboard, and I've had a great time with it. X470 brings nice things like uh, better power delivery and store MI, which is something I may take a look at in the future. The 8600K is tested with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon, and I really like this motherboard. It's my personal motherboard, and it is a very good one, that is for sure. Now, memory-wise, I tested them both with a 16GB G-Skill DDR4 memory kit at 3400MHz for all the tests. They were both tested with the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti, and both were tested with the Arctic Freezer 33 120mm air cooler. So let's move over and talk about the overclocking and the temperatures. So the 2600X here managed a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Uh, you may think, well, oh, that's exactly the same as the boost clock. Well, it is and it isn't. The boost clock there, which is actually more like 4.25, uh, which is what I really saw with it, it'll kind of go up to that and then it may drop down a little bit uh, it won't sort of hold it the whole time but it does for most things it depends on the application if it's loading up all the cores then you generally will see it come down but if it's only loading up one or two then you'll see it sort of hold that 4.25 a lot of the time there the little i5 8600k however this thing overclocks like crazy this guy went up to 5 gigahertz on all six cores, which is a pretty incredible overclock uh, given that the stock boost speed is 4.3 gigahertz. So a big difference there in clock speeds for the 8600K. When it came to the temps though, you also see this, the 2600X was pretty good in terms of temperatures, where the 8600K, once it was overclocked, started getting pretty toasty. So for this, I ran the IDA64 CPU stress test for five minutes, and as you guys can see, the 2600X definitely wins here, the 8600K getting uh, quite toasty there <laughs> once it was overclocked. So let's jump into the benchmarks then and see how these two CPUs perform. So once again, like I said in my 2700X showdown, which if you haven't watched yet, go back and watch that video. The 2600X here, I in games, I didn't see any gains with it overclocked. Wow, that was a mouthful. Uh, because as I just said, a lot of times games will only use say one or two cores, uh, not all games, but some, and because this would go up to 4.25 gigahertz by itself with X XFR2, um, the 4.2 gigahertz overclock would mean that it pretty much scored the same, sometimes even a tiny bit less, but it was all sort of margin of error territory. So I only showed the overclock results for the 2700X when they were actually different from the stock results and otherwise I just wouldn't show them because it was just the exact same results. The 8600K here though did show a big difference between its stock results and its overclock results. So let's jump to the benchmarks and see how they both performed.
and we're back. So what do we make of the benchmarks then? Well, the 2600X does a pretty good job there, especially in the multi-core test, so the productivity type stuff. It does a pretty decent job. As I said before the benchmarks, with the overclocking, it didn't really change much. A little bit in the productivity stuff, but for the gaming, it didn't do anything, at least in my testing with the uh, settings I run. However, the 8600K does a very, very good job there. A very good job, especially once it was overclocked, it started to really close the gap in those uh, multi-threaded applications, the productivity stuff, the 8600K started to do a, a very good job. And in gaming, it just ran away with it, especially once it was overclocked. The 8600K did better in gaming overall. So as far as the benchmarks go, I do have to give it to the 8600K. It is going to be the better CPU especially when it comes to gaming and productivity stuff. the At stock speeds, the 2600X will do a bit better, but once you overclock the 8600K, it gets very close to the point where there's not really a huge difference between the two CPUs. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and we need to bring price into it, because that is a big factor here. So right now, here in New Zealand, the Intel i5 8600K goes for at 399 New Zealand dollars here at Playtech, and that's without a cooler. The Ryzen 5 2600X goes for 349 New Zealand dollars at Playtech, and it comes with a Wraith Spire cooler, which is a good cooler, so $50 less with a good cooler. With the 8600K, you're going to need at least a decent 120 millimeter air cooler, which means you've got to add another $50 to $80 New Zealand onto that. Uh, price so it ends up being like a hundred to a hundred and thirty dollars more expensive to go the 8600k route uh, So you know it is starting to add up in terms of money there That's quite a significant difference between the two CPUs So who do I say wins the showdown then and this is difficult because this one's hard to call in terms of value obviously the 2600x is the winner because it's cheaper and it comes with a cooler so you don't need to worry about it a decent cooler as well but it's difficult to overclock you don't really see much in terms of gains from overclocking and as we saw the gaming performance can't match the 8600k that being said the 8600k does win in gaming and it does narrow the gap considerably once you overclock it right up to like 5 gigahertz in productivity applications but that being said it also will cost you a lot more. So who wins the showdown? For me, it's hard to call because it depends on what you value more. You know, if, if you're not that concerned with the money side of it, you just want pure gaming performance, then you're probably going to head more towards the 8600K. But if you are someone that is very money conscious about it and looking for that good value and you're not looking for the absolute best gaming performance out there, then you're going to trend more towards the 2600X. So for me personally, it's it's really hard to call. So I want to throw it to you guys. Which one would you pick out of them? I've laid it out for you the best way I can and I want to know in the comment section down below if you have to go out and pay with your own money right now, which one would you pick? Would you go for the better value 2600X or the better performing 8600k especially in games i'd really like to know because this one is actually quite close to call now i thank you for watching this video i tried really hard on it and i try to lay it out the best way i can for you guys if you haven't subscribed to tech showdown if you could it would be great because it shows support for me for teddy obviously and it gives me motivation to keep making these videos for you guys because i can see you know, people are subscribing, people are enjoying the content, and it just gives me that drive to keep putting out more showdowns for you guys. And as always, I'll see you next time.